Minimalism for me is not about restrictions, but mindful choices and intentional spending. I think that a no by year concept is very interesting and exciting to try, and I think I'm already doing a low buy. So today I want to chat about my principles of buying things, and I will also show you everything that I bought and made for myself in December. Hey my friends, if you're new here, I'm Anna and this is my channel about everything that is mindful, minimalist and creative. In December I bought 9 things and I DIY'd 3 things for myself. And um, it's it's a bit more than I usually do. I don't no, I don't often let so many things in, but it happened and so in today's video I will show you everything that I got and made for myself and will share my principles and thoughts on buying and not buying. Last week I went to a local annual Christmas fair, which I absolutely love because it gives a great opportunity to local artists and artisans to Sell, to sell their creations to a wider audience. I'm a minimalist, but I'm also a creator and an artisan as well. And I know how important it is to have your handmade items appreciated and bought by someone. So I got these two ceramic brooches. I will show you this one and this one and also a ceramic bracelet, which is kind of like funny. It's a little ceramic carrot. And I got them from a very sweet artist named Dasha. Mm, I, I love the feeling that they give. They're so pleasant to touch and to wear. And now I use these, these brooches to hold the microphone when I'm filming. Well apparently not now but they're also super cool for holding the scarf in place or serving as an extra button for shirt or anything but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with having this and I also got uh, another bracelet so it's this textile one it's kind it has kind of a boho hippie <laughs> vibe and as you might notice i love wearing bracelets in general and i always wear i will show you like on my hand i never take them off so i have five bracelets with uh, natural gemstones that i made myself and i have this metal one uh, that was gifted by my brother and it says follow your inspiration so i find it kind of a great um, mantra for myself and i also have like a tiny um, eternity sign bracelet uh, my husband has the same so it's kind of a connection thing between us I love jewelry and I'm very open about that always because jewelry is a very mm, special thing for me. Uh, it's part of my personal style, like clothes, and I prefer to choose jewelry also uh, with my heart and intuition. As I already said in one of my previous videos that some items are like poems and I always keep poems. And such are all the artisan things that I own. I don't own any expensive jewelry, just simple semi-precious stones, silver, stainless steel, textile, ceramic. Supporting small handmade businesses is a very important part of my spending philosophy because I think it's one of the major ways to oppose monopolies and unethical enterprises. So yeah, it's, it's very essential for me to get artisan items from time to time, especially from those creators who I resonate with, you know, on some very special level. Yep, I got two physical books for the first time in, I guess, six years. 
I just couldn't resist it. <laughs> I occasionally happened to be near a bookstore and I decided to look around and flip through and also get warm after freezing temperatures outside. So that's why bookstores are such a perfect thing to <laughs> have in winters. So the first book that I got is uh, the one by German philosopher Eric Fromm. So I, of course, I, I got it in, in Russian. And it's called uh, To Be or To Have or To Have or To Be. <laughs> Sorry. I will put the link down in the description uh, about this book. And it was written in 1976. And it's so amazing how much those concepts uh, explored in this book are relevant in nowadays situations of overconsumption, uh, shopping addictions, manipulations, like marketing manipulations and so on. So um, yeah, I already began to read it and I'm making some pencil notes as I always <laughs> love to do. And yeah, it, it has so many exciting ideas that maybe I would be interested to discuss with you. So yeah, that was a very good purchase and a very exciting one. And also Eric Fromm is one of the most readable philosophers who are actually not painful to understand. So I really appreciate that. And the second book that I got is by a Russian religious historian, historian of different kinds of religions, uh, Boris Falikov. Uh, here he is, if you can see it. And um, it's about the influence. So in this book, he explores the influence of occultism and Eastern religions, such as Buddhism and Hinduism on the art of the 20th century. He talks about such uh, personalities as Vasily Kandinsky, Kazimir Malevich, um, Jerome Salinger, Carl Jung, and many, many others. So this topic is so interesting to me. And um, it's also a very, um, very satisfying aesthetic pleasure to have this book because I really like uh, the cover design and also pages are so pleasant to touch. And sometimes having a full featured reading experience with all your senses involved, like smelling, touching, hearing the pages, not just uh, seeing it. It's, it's, a very, it's a very special thing and it's a must for me from time to time. Although I have the majority of my books in e-format, like electronic format. It's super handy and yeah, I like reading both ways. So, and I was um, wondering whether, whether you want me to maybe to make reviews on the books or on these books or other books that I'm reading. So just let me know down in the comments. So the next one is not a plant purchase, but I needed one anyway. It's a towel. So I will show you. It's very, very beautiful. It's not that big. Um, yeah. And it's a mix of uh, linen and cotton. And it's produced by the same uh, Belarusian linen factory that makes linen scarves that I showed you in my video about winter wardrobe. And I love how soft it is and at the same at the same time textured. And a few years ago, I figured out that um, non-terry um, towels, you know, the terry cloth, um, the terry fabric, um, I no longer purchase any terry, uh, terry cloth towels because these plain ones, they are much more uh, durable and easy to maintain and they dry so fast. So I prefer to use them and they're also versatile. So for example, I've been owning uh, this, this Turkish towel for about five years. And a few years ago, I gifted the same style 
one to my husband but it was um, in a navy color instead of white and he used it as a scarf like this yeah and it looked super stylish and kept his neck warm so yeah that's that's the towel that i got Another personal use item that I unexpectedly got for myself is this body butter. So it arrived, it was meant to be a gift, but it arrived in a slightly damaged packaging. So um, I decided not to return it, but keep it for myself. It's all natural and it has a very pleasant jasmine aroma and i love floral 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 scents uh, so it's a very unexpected but, but pleasant gift for myself and a um, family member that was supposed to get this butter uh, will be getting something else from me um, a handmade item actually <laughs> The last thing that I bought is yarn for my new knitting project that would be a um, loose v-neck sweater. It will be three colored, so I got yarn in these three colors. It will be dark beige and sort of burnt orange and deep crimson. Yeah, so this is, this is the swatch that I knitted and of course I couldn't resist like binge knitting <laughs> right away. This is the amount I uh, knitted already. It's such a great creative meditation and if you are a knitter or crocheter, I, I bet that you understand me. And I've also made a decision not to buy any clothes in 2022 but DIY everything uh, of course it doesn't cover socks and underwear because I'm not that skilled yet but I guess I've reached the point when I want to rediscover my childhood tradition of making and remaking things yeah so we'll see how it goes and speaking of let's move on to all the items that I DIY'd in December In December, I finally finished my tank top. Yeah, my knitted tank top. Here it is. First, I followed the pattern, but then decided to experiment with the back part. But it turned out not exactly as I expected it. Uh, but I really like it a lot and it goes well with almost everything that I have. It can be worn as it is, you can wear it over um, a turtleneck, a shirt, a long sleeve, a t-shirt, just everything. I stopped trying to make all my handmade items perfect. I find it hard to follow the patterns all the way and be super diligent and I just let myself just be free from all those restrictions and just follow the creative vibe sort of. Of course sometimes it doesn't work but the experience is very delightful. And anyway, when the item is quirky and imperfect, it gets a very unique and attractive character, just like us humans, right? Finally, I got use of the fabric that I bought almost a year ago and I thought that the amount of fabric that I got was enough for making two pairs of shorts but apparently I was wrong. So that's why these shorts are too colored. I didn't buy any pattern, nor I constructed any pattern by myself. I decided to take the easiest path and I just traced my old pajama shorts that are worn out already, but I made these ones slightly bigger because the fabric is not stretchy and it worked quite well. 
these are very soft and breathable and of course when making them i was so afraid to fail and to waste the fabric because unlike um, knitting and crocheting sewing is not reversible i mean like you cannot unravel <laughs> what what has been sewn but when i got rid of that fear of failure and of wasting something it was such a great liberating moment so yeah it was kind of a philosophical <laughs> philosophical uh, moment as well I still have a decent amount of fabric left, but it's all in smaller pieces and I think I might make a tank top out of them or just simple drawstring bags or even handkerchiefs. You've probably seen it in my previous videos and these snowflakes, yeah, here they are. And these snowflakes have been my obsession for <laughs> a couple of weeks. I even made some garlands for gifts. I didn't buy any yarn specially for this project. I just used the yarn that I already had in my hobby supplies. And this is one of the reasons when I'm not a traditional minimalist in my hobbies. I, I always try to keep uh, my hobby supplies of course, I, I can get rid of some that I lost interest in, but as time and experience shows, um, I never know what I will be interested in again. For example, now I kind of regret giving away all my felting supplies because I might try it once again, but right now I don't want to spend extra money on that. So yeah, the snowflake garland. The last Thing that I DIY'd for myself and for my home in December. I live frugally, but I love spending money not only on necessities, but some joyful things as well. And I'm trying to choose those joys in the most mindful and minimalist way that I can. For example, if an item can make me happy, I immediately feel it and I feel the connection, the special connection that appears between us. I know it sounds weird, but I believe that um, items and things also have energy like everything else in this world. And I want to fill my days and my life with um, energy of love and kindness and creativity. So that's it. Let me know in the comments what recent purchases or DIYs made you happy or maybe what you're dreaming of getting or maybe you're doing a no buy or low buy year in 2022. I'll be super excited to know. And thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I will see you in the next one. You have a lovely day, my friends. And пока-пока.